Hello everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Tiny and Big in Grandpa's Leftovers. Despite the vaguely sexual sounding title, this is actually kind of a cutesy indie 3D puzzle platformer that has just come out on Steam. And in particular I stress the 3D there, because we see a lot of puzzle platformers, you know, in my, my day to day working life here looking at indie games on Steam. You see a lot of 2D puzzle platformers. Uh, a 3D one is both ambitious and pretty rare and I'm actually having a really good time. Uh, with Tiny and Big so far. I think this is going to be one of those games that, uh, in what has been kind of a mediocre year for indie games so far, and sorry to say that, but uh, this game is really going to stand out. It might be one of those games that actually, you know, when it comes time for like year-end indie awards stuff, might even factor in. That's how much I'm enjoying it so far. Anyway, we are going to select a level here, and I will kind of explain to you what the heck is going on. Let's start with, um, let's start with the altitude upwards. And we'll load this up. So basically, the story of Tiny and Big, and Grandpa's Leftovers, I suppose, is that Tiny and Big are brothers whose grandfather has died, and he left his underpants to Tiny. Now, it might seem pretty weird, except for the fact that Tiny's, or these underpants, I'm just going to actually skip by a lot of the story. The, the underpants give you the ability to basically, like, levitate rocks with your mind and throw them around and everything. As you can see, it's a pretty cool aesthetic going on here as well. So Big has stolen these underpants from Tiny, and this is Tiny's quest to get them back. I'm just going to skip by this a little bit. Now, every level that I've basically come across so far has had the same basic conceit, which is, like, basically just climb. So the way that this is kind of unique and is not a typical uh, action or puzzle platformer is that Big or Tiny has three abilities. His first ability uh, is the ability to, like, grab onto stones with this hook thing, and then he can walk them backwards. He can also, if he so chose, like, push them wherever he wants. Uh, his second ability is he has this laser gun which he can use to cut and by cutting of course I can make myself like a, a platform that I can eventually jump up on I'm not gonna show you that here believe me you're gonna see more than enough laser action here and uh, the third ability is this rocket which if I shoot this out and then I hold the right bumper I can actually like propel this forward so by using all three of these we're gonna eventually climb this entire tower this might actually take us a while now I should point out uh, that these collectibles actually have meaning like, you can see this is a uh, cassette tape when you pick these up, these actually become the music tracks that you hear in the game. And the music that you hear in the game is fucking fantastic. It is really, really good, as you will see. So you really want to, uh, you know, find all those tracks if at all possible. So I just use my rocket to get up here. The, the principal, I guess, draw... Don't worry, the music will start in a second. I guess the principal draw of, um, Tiny and Big, at least so far, and I'm about an hour and a half in, I would say, uh, is... The fact that you can solve every single puzzle in a variety of different ways. So one way that I do things a lot of the time is just by using my laser to cut a path. Uh, but you don't necessarily have to do that. I wonder if yeah, I can just make that jump like that. Uh, let me think about some ways that might be... This one might be one of those puzzles that you can only solve one way. But I'm going to try to get this thing to maybe function as a path. Okay, so we could do that to pick up this boring rock, but I guess another thing I could have done is just jumped immediately on this platform that I cut for myself here. Basically, suffice it to say, there are a wide variety uh, of different ways to solve puzzles here. So, for example, I can grab this. This is a very, very early level in the game. Really only the, the second level after your tutorial, so... Some of the stuff that we come across here is a little simplistic, but over the course of the game, it does get a little bit more difficult. Uh, the, the principal downside, I guess... I wonder if I can just push this rock off. Yeah, okay, that's way easier than the way I did it my first time through. Um, oh, the only real problem that I've had with Tiny and Big so far, actually, there's, there's been maybe two problems. One of them is that sometimes uh, I can find myself in a situation or put myself in a situation where puzzles are now unsolvable. Like, I will, let, let's say I drop this by accident. <laughs> sometimes art imitates life, right? Uh, but I can still solve this one, so this is a bad example. I think, anyway. Maybe not. Uh, we'll, we'll try. Oh yeah, we're fine. Um, sometimes you can find yourself in unsolvable situations. When you find yourself in unsolvable situations, all you have to do is restart. Which is kind of shitty, because you feel like, I don't know, maybe it should be designed in such a way that... Uh, you can always solve, given the situation, but I, maybe that's impossible from a design perspective with a game like this. Anyway, this is big. As you can see, he's wearing his underpants on his head. Uh, those are quite obviously pretty stinky. I really like the graphical style in this game. It's got kind of like that pseudo 2D look, even though it's 3D. Uh, I'm trying to think of a game that it looks familiar to. There's something like right on the tip of my tongue that I can't get to, but it's like pseudo cell shaded. 
Anyway, our whole quest in the game is to uh, basically get those underpants from Big. And as I said, uh, I was going to say that there's only one negative. But there actually is a second negative. The second negative is that apparently this game is actually quite short. So, like I said, I've played about an hour so far. I can feel myself sort of coming towards the end of it. I've heard uh, from other review sources that the game itself is maybe, you know, between two to four hours in length, depending on how good you are at solving the puzzles. So, uh, this is a game that is definitely, you know, quality, not quantity. There's not a whole lot of game here, uh, but what game there is, is eminently enjoyable. Now, it's worth noting that the puzzles I've come across so far also are not particularly difficult. I wonder if I can make this work. But there is, like, something very, very satisfying about solving them. I should just be able to jump past this. And, you know, recall, as with any puzzle game, this is not my first time going through this puzzle. So it's going to be a lot easier... What? <laughs> it's gonna be a lot easier for me now than it was uh, for me my first time through. I wonder if I can just make this jump. Alright, if, if we hadn't made that, we would have died. Also, sometimes the camera gets a little wonky, but by and large, it's actually it's pretty dang good. Let's just push these, whatever they are, wicker baskets over the edge, and we'll continue climbing. I think we're starting to get fairly close to the end of this level, actually. So like I said, there's a variety of different ways to solve puzzles in Tiny and Big in Grandpa's Leftovers. Uh, I feel like... Ooh, do I want to be here? I think this is a new area for me. Uh, my first time through the game, or through what I've played of the game so far, I wonder if these can open, or if I can pull these out. Or if I can rocket them out. Or if I can cut them out. Okay, maybe I can cut them out. This is something entirely new to me, actually. I've never seen this before. What is going on in here? A drum set, I got a new piece of music. I've got an arcade machine, I had no idea that this even existed. Alright, get all those boxes into the hungry hole to get an achievement. If you're not in the mood for playing games, feel free to step through the exit door. Okay. You want to get these boxes where? Into the hungry holes? One second. Okay, that's gonna kill me, I don't want to do that. Like I said, the music in this game is fantastic, so whenever you get the opportunity to pick up some, um, like, music crates, or music tapes, you should absolutely do so. Oh, this is, this is how easy the bonus stage is? Oh, I get it. Oh, this is incredibly easy, then. I guess this is, like, one of the first bonus stages you would come across, considering, uh, how early on in the game we are right now. But anyway, we'll just use our rocket to propel this last one in here. Should give us victory, I'm assuming. Gate of Losers becomes the Gate of Winners. We get an achievement, apparently, called Hungry Hole. I'm not sure if I'm comfortable having that kind of suggestion on my Steam profile. And an achievement for joining the band as well. Not sure what's up with that, but that's cool. I'll take it. I kind of like that machine as well, but I definitely did not want to go back. I guess there's, like, concept art here. As well as... The actual soundtrack. I think that there's a, a, actually a music video for one of the songs in this game, but I don't know what it, what song it is. Can I rock out on the drums here? No. Can I fuck up the drum set and cut it in half? Damn right I can. <laughs> and I get an achievement for that as well. But anyway, okay, cool. We found this bonus stage. Uh, but as I was saying, like on my first time through the game, I basically... Is this another secret room? Come on. No, it's not. Uh, my first time through the game... I basically just have been using the laser to cut through everything, because I find that makes it easy. It's like the easiest way to generate solutions to puzzles, to like basically make a path for you to get up the mountain. Whoa, that went into the distant future. In fact, the, the first like 40 minutes I played the game, I didn't even know that you could continuously fire the rocket. I thought you could only do it in, as like a little bit of burst damage, so I would just go like, buh, buh, and it would move it two inches. And I was like, man, who would ever use the fucking rocket? But now that, of course, I've sussed it out, and the game does tutorialize it, I'm just an idiot. Um, then the rocket has become much more useful to me. I think we are getting fairly close to the end of this level. Because I was... I remember having substantial problems with this part uh, my first time through. The other collectibles is just, you know, boring rocks, as it says. Uh, and I think these are just collectibles for the sake of being collectibles. So let's cut ourselves a little path here. Rocket off the top. One thing is for sure, the rocket is making my speeds at this game a lot faster. But like I said, I don't want to show off too, too much because, you know, of course, part of the fun here is actually discovering these solutions for yourself. Worth noting, although I, I'm playing the game on the PC right now, and I feel like I say this every time I play a platformer, but I'm using the Xbox 360 controller, uh, and there is native 360 controller support, so there was no, like... 
period where I had to configure the controls or anything. It just worked totally fine from the get-go. Lock in this bad boy, get this off here. I can't tell you how long I spent inside that room that I just, like, steamrolled in two seconds my first time through the game. Can I walk around here or am I missing something? Laser? Now let's laser a path through here. And once we get to the end of this level, maybe I'll show off uh, the next level, which I think is kind of like a boss encounter. And then I'll call it quits. Because I don't want to show off too much, like I said, game's pretty short. It'd be pretty shitty if I showed off, like, some of the... Well, not even the best parts of the game, but just a lot of the game uh, in my Let's Look At here. So I performed a little bit of dental surgery on this dude. That is also an achievement, uh, your first time th Oh god, that's how you die, by the way. <laughs> you die by falling or by, like, being crushed by a rock. So oftentimes you're uh, your own worst enemy in this game. Let's jump up around here. Uh, I think when we go inside... No, this isn't where I want to be. This is something that I think is an in-joke. Like, occasionally you'll come across these plaques with faces on them. And I'm pretty sure these are the developers that have just put their faces in the game. Also, that's an achievement as well, so if you're, you know, watching this for, like, Achievement Hunter, you, know, you come to the right place. Uh, how do I want to do this? I've forgotten where to go in this level. Generally speaking, the levels are pretty linear, though. Oh, I remember now. So we'll just cut open this door. You can tell that based on the zipper. Oh, I gotta be able to see the whole thing. So look at the zipper. Closer, you gotta look at the... Get further away, cover the hole. There we go. Let's try to line it up as best as we can so we can be sure that it will open effectively. Cool beans, toss a rocket in there. There we go. And why not one more in here just to make it easier on ourselves? Actually, I probably should use one of these as like a bridge. It's not how I did it the first time, but it's how I'm going to do it this time. Perfect. Alright, so we'll walk on this huge heavy stone door. And I think we are coming up to the end of the level, in which case, I think we're going to go directly into the next boss encounter, which I might actually show. Alright, so they're going uh -huh. through some dialogue here, some typical sibling rivalry, give me back my underpants, no way dude, they give me magical powers. I wouldn't know, as I'm an only child, but anyway. Uh, so this introduces like, oh god, the mechanic that we use to fight big most of the time, which is basically we're going to use our laser to cut whatever he's throwing at us, or whatever he's standing on. Ah yes, this will be the start of the next level. So I'll just show this next level, and then I'll call it quits again, don't want to spoil too much. But I do want to show you that there is some variety with respect to the levels. So we are going to get crushed by a rock here. Oh no. And yes, this is the, the boss level, cool. And I should be able to speed through this one fairly quickly, although this one took me several tries when I was doing it for myself. Kind of an in-joke. Tiny almost always gets killed. But I have a bad feeling something weird is going on. So we're going to make our way over to this desert temple. <clears throat> but obviously, Big is not, uh, you know, as big a fan of our plan as we are. So this is a, a boss level that kind of functions... It's very different in design, almost, than a, uh, a typical platforming level. This is one where, again, it's almost got like that 2D aesthetic where we're, we're not climbing like up and around. We're actually just trying to get from the entrance to the exit. Anyway, I'm, I'm just going to skip past most of this dialogue again. It is pretty clever, pretty funny. Maybe clever is a strong word, but it's nice. It's cute. A lot of things about this game are cute, but from a gameplay perspective, it's, it's great as well. So we're going to watch out for these rocks that Big is going to throw at us. What a dick bag. What we can do is, uh, you know, cut them with our laser if we so chose. But it's just as easy, in my perspective, to just avoid them. So we'll just run around here. Oh, oh god, I, I forgot we should cut this guy down, not just run into it. Anyway, so Big will move over here. We'll collect some more boring rocks. Uh, and our principal goal here is to cut down the platforms that he's standing on. So we'll just hide from the rocks. I assure you this is more difficult your first time through. And then I'll try to land a nice rocket there. There we go, that was enough to set him off balance. Again, this part alone probably took me like 10 minutes my first time through. But it, it, it's good that I'm having fun playing... Is that close enough? It's good that I'm having fun playing through it again with the... No! With a, a slightly different style. It shows that there's some replayability in this game. And I genuinely do think there is some replayability in this game. How am I going to do this? Let's come down here. The pants were stone me. If I had a nickel for every time I heard that, right guys? Let's cut this right here. Toss a rocket in there and beat it away. Man, this is way more efficient than the way I did it last time, which was like, make a cut. Oh, uh, it didn't knock him down. Make another cut. Okay, it didn't knock him down. Make another. Damn it. 
There goes my A plus rank. Uh, you know, but I was just like basically making cuts like a like an ice sculptor or something. Pretty frequent use of checkpoints, so you never have to go back too far in your uh, your tiny and big experience. So let's avoid that. Make a cut here. Use a rocket. That'll do. Make a little bridge for ourselves here that I can cross. Oh, come on, man. I really needed that bridge. Okay, this should be okay. Yes. So we'll make another cut. Avoid these rocks quickly. Fire a rocket ourselves. Bam! Again, way, way easier than the first time I did it just with the laser and the shot type dealie here. Rocket, turns out, is useful, not included for no reason. But I guess one cut was all that was needed there. We can also die if we fall too far, so I should be careful about jumps like that. So the power of his pants is increasing. I know, I know that feeling, man. Now he's going to try to smush us, and the level's going to change a little bit. Uh, ooh, that was kind of close, actually. There is some variety in this level with respect to the things that you're doing. Like, right now, it's been kind of like a, almost like a crash... I didn't knock him down. It's been almost like a Crash Bandicoot-style level, where I, I've been, like, running towards the, the exit. That was close as well. Uh, now it becomes a little bit more of, like, your standard, maybe, like, a Super Mario Galaxy-type boss fight or something. That killed me? What, where did that come from? I didn't even see that. Alright, but that's okay. We're, we're, we're at the boss fight again. Where is Big? There is Big. Cut this down. Oh, my God. Okay. This is the easiest way to do things. Rocket plus laser, I think. Here, we'll cut again. Fire. Oh! Ah, oh, that was close. Okay, where's he going this time? I'm predicting this one. Nope, this one. Okay. Do another laser cut. Fire a rocket. Knock him off balance. He's going over here. Let's cut in advance. Rocket him off again. Controls really well, by the way, with the Xbox 360 controller. I have no idea. How it controls with the PC, I assume you, you'd be using <clears throat> your mouse for, for aiming, which is probably, you know, standard. Uh, and, it, you know, it may even work better, because it does kind of control like a, like a first-person shooter to a certain extent, I suppose. And, oh, yeah, that's gonna kill me. Uh, I know people are fans of playing first-person shooter on PC as opposed to playing them on the consoles. A lot of people, anyway. Personally, uh, I couldn't care less, but... Oh! That, I thought that was gonna kill me, too. Um, but yeah, so I'm assuming that it controls all right. I don't know. Platformers, man, it always seems like a controller. Maybe just because I grew up playing platformers on consoles as opposed to the PC. You know, when you think of platformers, typically you think of, you know, Super Mario, Sonic the Hedgehog, stuff like that. That wasn't, oh god, so that wasn't like PC exclusive or anything. Of course. You don't need me to tell you that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Controller just always seems to handle platforms better, in my opinion. But that may just be... In any case, we'll make our way up here. Uh, Big has been doing basically nothing to us so far, so I think we're going to be okay. Except for those, like, three times he's killed us, of course. <laughs> I guess those are kind of important. Um, I wonder if I can back this bad boy up a little bit. No, I can't. So I'm going to laser myself a little bit of a path. That was not a good laser. Oh, man! That hurts. And we're very nearly at the end of this level, uh, at which point I will stop the video so I can avoid spoiling the entirety of the game. But suffice it. What, what's going on? My controls are reversed. No, 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 Tiny! Why'd you do it, Tiny? No, he's still alive. Look, he's doing some Sylvester Stallone cliffhanger. Oh. Okay. Um, yeah, suffice to say, Tiny and Big has really impressed me so far. Uh, I guess it kind of sucks that it's short, but you know, better short and sweet than, than overstaying its welcome. Is that a shadow of a rock coming to crush me? Yes, it, it was, but I made it out. Um, you know, like, it's ten bucks on for, what, I guess like, eight ninety nine. it's opening week. Let me just focus here for a second. Stop bothering me, god damn it! Um, yeah, so it's ten bucks, it's on for eight ninety nine for for its opening week. And I, I think it's definitely worth it, like, if you, if you have the money to spare. It's a little bit short. So, you know, it's, it might not be like a Super Meat Boy where for 15 bucks you get, like, you know, 50 hours of content. You might only get, like, two to four here. Uh, I definitely think it's still worth it, you know, like $2.50 an hour for the right to play uh, a game that is just basically as fun as this. Like, I, I'm not going to 
tout this as if it's some kind of like step forward for the for the genre or for the medium as art or anything like that but it is a hell of a lot of fun and in what has been a slow year for games so far uh tiny and big definitely stands out as one of the the better titles that i've played so far this year so if you're interested absolutely pick it up i'm gonna go stop avoiding the game right here or stop uh ruining the game right here i'm gonna avoid ruining the game right here is what i meant to say uh, but as always, thank you guys for watching. Tiny and Big and Grandpa's Leftovers now available on Steam for 10 bucks. Highly recommended. I'll see you next time.